what he said over here in that verse? Blessed is he that what? Readeth and what? Hear the word of this prophecy. Remember what I said? That when you receive a letter from your friend, you start to read. What happened? You hear their voice talking to who? To you. That's why when you write it, you intend it to write from within you, deep part of your heart, what you want that person to hear from you. Am I right? So John wants us to hear, to hear his voice of what he went through. What did he saw? Amen? Amen. And the part is, I usually go verse by verse, line by line, but I am not going to do that today. Today, we go to certain verses and then we follow up. And this is the area I want you to visit in one nine. Listen to this carefully. <laughs> I, John, who also am your what? Brother. Listen to that. I, John, who also am your brother. And companion in what? Tribulations. Remember how we started the conversation today? When we feel what? Down, out, outcast, oppressed, and depressed. Huh? That we need what? Say patience. Because tribulation will endure you. Tribulation is the fire that melts iron. That melt metal that want to give you a new shape, a new form. And that new form is the inward man. That form is the inward man, the new man. That by being converted, you start to what? To be transformed and changed. That's why Paul always writes it, that the inner man be what? Strengthened. I, I travail, Paul's right. I travail that Christ be what? For where? In you. That tribulation, that fire, that's what we need to understand that that is for our own good. But we need to be transformed and elevated into whose image? The image of God. Amen. Then he said, and in the kingdom, and I'm patient of who? And patience of Jesus Christ. I want you to really pay attention to this. So he's comparing himself to what we might be going through. Am I right? Yeah. And even about Jesus Christ having patience too. Amen. That must mean place of my killing. Mm, amen. Interesting. Because crucifixion means extinguishing selfishness. You know? Amen. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, he said what? Write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches without in Asia. And unto Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira. And unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, unto Laodicea. And we can say we have walked that land. Yes, we did. We've been to that land. And as we read it, we start to understand it. That it's more of a change well in our heart than anything else. And this is the part over here that I want to take you to again. Every time that you see the, I hear the word voice, where should it take you to? When I hear the word voice, take me right to the garden. Right to the garden. See, you hear the voice right away. Whoa, you should jump. So and I turn to see the voice that spake with me. What Adam hear? I heard his voice. And I was afraid and I had Because he had turned his back to who? God. God. That turning the back to God. Over here now, John, and I turn to see, turn to see the voice, turn to see the voice, face to face, 
And how do you see a voice? Hmm? You see, that verse 1 and 2 of Genesis, it has so much in it that 15 years later we're still, still learning from it. But I said before to you that in those three, what do you hear? You hear vibration. What else? Frequencies. What else? Wavelengths. Of those three. They seem to be similar. But over here, and I turn to see the voice that spake with me, and be what? Turn. What did he say? Seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlestick, like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. Well, when you see this, you know, I, it's not that I just see a candlestick <coughs> and in front of him there was Jesus standing. <coughs> we see the candlestick in whom? Jesus Christ. The candlestick is who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Why do I say that? Because the word said in the book of Isaiah 11 that the bud or the rod, what is said, the stump of Jesus of, of Jesse? I am the stump of Jesse. Uh huh. Uh huh. You already got a quick Bible there? No. No. Yeah, we're going to start bringing the Bible to church one of these, right, guys? Like the Isaiah 11. Okay, I'm there. And there shall come, listen to this, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And guess what? Of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and mind, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Guess what, my beloved? It is not the seven candles. It is what? The spirit of God, the fullness of God, be what? Pouring out of who? Jesus Christ. Out of Jesus Christ. Amen. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Amen. Can you see that? Yes. Amen. When I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and get about the paps with a golden girdle, his head and hair white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand, what he had? Seven stars. Seven stars. And out of these, and out of his mouth went a sharp what? Two edged sword. And his countenance was the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, what happened? I fell his feet as they. Now, the book of Revelation is not a book of fear. It should be a book of joy. It should be, I mean, I should be exploding with joy that there John is unveiling to us Jesus Christ. Yes, the promise, the tree of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one come to the Father but what? By me. By me. So already, with this kind of knowledge, shall you be afraid? No. no. The only one that you should fear is the Lord. Because he said, 
The beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom and knowledge. So to fear Father 